Yo, this is O from Body by O, Body by O Tactical, Kofun Academy, Kofun Community Securities. We're here with real live street stars. Like, comment, share, subscribe. We love you, baby. Let's go. Real life street stars. Real life street stars. The Black John Wick. <laughs> we got him in the building, man. Body by O, man. O, um, man, uh, bro, this is a long time coming, man, long because time, we didn't ran so many paths. We didn't did not only the hub. Uh, we didn't went out to um brought we brought the yeah, we brought a lot of the heavy hitter DJs out to the ranch. Right. right and right. um, man, your story is one story that we've been wanting to tell, and I think it's even more prevalent now right, to right. talk about this type of story about um you know gun safety gun right. laws uh utilizing firearms and things right. like that because man the world's gone crazy, crazy. the world's gone crazy it's and um we needed to have this conversation man there's a lot of uh license holders in the building right now right it is yeah. a lot of gun tone license holders man how more than half of them Good. have pistols on them now or something they got. I don't yeah. know what they got. I smell gunpowder coming in. Yeah, he, he said, I smell gunpowder coming in. <laughs> man, let's get your history, man. Uh, go ahead and reintroduce yourself. Tell us where you're from, first and foremost, and man, just um, a little bit of your history. Yeah, my name is O, um, CEO, founder of Body by O, Body by O Tactical, two different entities. And then we have a Kofina Academy, which is a school, and then a Kofina Community Security. Um, we call it a Kofina because basically African war sword symbols, um, Adinkra symbols. Um, I'm six generations out of West Ghana, born and raised in Florida, Central Florida town called Leesburg, 20 miles north of Disney. Um, family, my family dynamic was kind of like oil and water. It was crazy. My dad was the first black cop, first black pilot, Central Florida. My mama was a black panther. Conversations in our house were crazy. You already know that. You, give, me, give me one of those conversations. You got to um, give me one of those conversations. One of my favorite that we love to talk about anytime someone visits, uh, my dad was, he was a lieutenant. It's the sheriff's department at the time. And my mom, he was in charge. He was over the comm center. So anytime something happened, they would call him. And mom would be like, I'm tired of these white bitches calling my motherfucking house. He's like, baby, I'm, I'm sick of these white bitches calling my house. Baby, I'm in charge. Fuck these white bitches calling my house. It was crazy. It's, it was it was intense. I loved it. I, it was. It was <laughs> oh, yeah, That's crazy. Yes. Yeah, like the yeah yeah. Mom's so, mom's great on podcast. Was that a conflict of interest? Because don't Black Panthers believe in patrol? Bro, it, was, on the street? it was. It was. Mom was on some fuck these white people. Dad was like, I'm trying to make it better. I'm the first black. I'm trying to like fuck these white people. Baby, just give me a minute. Hurry up. It was it was intense, man. That's like intense. living with Malcolm X and Martin Luther King in the same Bro, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, that's, how, yeah that's, that's how the house was. That's how it was, yeah. So uh, I'm curious. Which, which way did you lean? Bro, my brother and I are kind of like a hybrid. Um, where I stand, again, my dad was the first black cop, first black pilot right. in Central Florida. So That's amazing. Fuck your oppression. Fuck your rules. I'm gonna do the fuck I want to do. That's amazing. I mean, and that's how I live my life. You see how I act. I don't give a yeah. fuck about all that. Are you, I got to make 110 to pass the test. Bet 115. Kiss my ass. There you go. You know so you mean? must have been had guns in the house. Oh man, yeah, my whole life. I grew up. Yeah, I'm like you know you a cop in black. Yeah. So I'm curious what in your path, um, in your background, what led you to like you know basically to the tactical part of life. Are you military trained? Yes. Is it police? Let's go through that because. So again, again, um, I got to be fair. Uh, the universe set it up. I don't, I don't think I had a choice in a lot of things. Um, some stuff I was just good at. Some stuff I fell in love with. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, perfect example, how you and I met, we met through Bay Bay. Correct. Right? Out, I was literally just helping out at church doing security because I was military. And Bebe was like, yo, I need you at the club. Like, what? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. You this like is man. Okay, this is 2005 I'm talking about. Damn. So he was like, okay, cool. Stand right here. Don't let nobody come to DJ Booth. I don't know nobody. Can I come to DJ Booth? No. I'm coming to DJ Booth. <laughs> Easy. I'm coming to DJ Booth anyway. Now you sleep. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. <laughs> now you, you know sleep. Was on, is this Coco Pellis? Coco Pellis. You man. know they on the Miley. You know bro, they on this. They on me. Bro, the Coco Pellis is the best training ground for anybody doing anything. Bro. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Wait, 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 right, stay right there. Yeah, yeah. What's the, you're about to put just a just a, a, a female or a dude on their ass yeah. in Coco Pella. How bad did it get? Oh, it got, um, me and this other guy named Joe. They used to call it, I, I forgot his, I think it's Fleming was his real name. But his name is uh, Joe because he looks like Joe. I don't know if y'all guys met him or not. Okay. But uh, dude tried to come to DJ booth and harass Chico, the DJ. Y'all know who Chico is. Yeah. yeah. 
and we whooped this dude from the DJ booth to the front door. Oh, damn. <laughs> it, was, it was bad. Don't, yeah. don't. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. Now, you got to tell me what it's like when you sleep a nigga and you looking at him. Is it like AI crossing a nigga over? Like, what is that feeling like? Sometimes it's disappointing, right? Because you got, you, got you got an adrenaline dump, right? And you right. got all this energy. It's like a nuclear bomb. And then, wow, you sleep, and that's all I get to do. Damn. Like, Damn. Come on, man. You know? Now, so, yeah. Now, tell us the most challenging altercation. You've been in the side coca Oh wow! Um, I'm gonna tell y'all the truth. It, it was it, it was it was a few weeks ago. Me, every male on my team got our ass whooped. It was intense. So there was a this was at it was at the Pentagon, right? So check this out. So the Pentagon. I got some huge guys, big huge guys, right? And that particular night, they had the kids in there, 18 or whatever. And two little girls was, you know, acting a fool in the middle of the floor. So this big guy named Cody, he's like 6'8", 400 fucking pounds. And she walks over here, fuck your security, fuck your security. She's maybe 4'11", 90 pounds, bro. And um, so I walk up and I was like, come on, ma'am, you know, yada, yada, yada. Fuck your security. And one of my other guards walked up. He's kind of short. He's got dreads. She saw someone close to her size and just <laughs> stole him. And in my mind, wait. Optics, 90 pound girl, we can't do this shit. Everybody got a cell phone. I ain't got time for my company to be all on Instagram. You know, real life street stars posting my shit all over the place. It's bad, right? So I'm screaming on the radio like, don't hurt this little girl, don't hurt this little girl. I turn around, she steals me in the face. Pop! I'm just like. <clears throat> so I kind of restrain her, kind of get her outside. And I got outside, I was like, damn, she just punched me in the face, but it didn't hurt. Yeah. Cool. So I go back in there. Two of my other guards and another young lady is up under the table just like scrapping. You just see a ball of dust and arms and legs. It's like in cartoons and shit, right? They fight and they fight and they fight. And I'm yelling, screaming, please do not hurt this girl. I'm calling for my, I got another guard, female, MMA fighter. I'm calling for her like, where you at? We need you. We need you. She's like, I'm upstairs. People throwing up. I got to carry them out. So we getting our ass whooped, right? So these two little girls, they whooped our ass for about a good six minutes until Jenny got in there. See, a girl can, you can come in, she, she knocked them out, boom, 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 threw them over the shoulder, took them out. We were standing there, we was pissed because like, yo, last week we, we whooped like six niggas, bro. But, dude, I got stole and I got an elbow to the face by a 90 pound, four foot 11 Little girl, man. I'm not gonna lie. I was in there that night. Them little girls were. Were you in there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, <laughs> got, like they got video party. footage. It's video footage of it. In the court, you know, D. Will was like, "I got y'all ass." I'm like, "Fuck you, bro." Like, <laughs> man, it's crazy. So, like, and again, we're gonna get to the security business stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm just curious. We're gonna go back to the background as far as um the military. Um, yeah. And you said it was it was kind of not your choice. So you know, I, man, look. Wow. Okay, we're doing this. So I was in high school. I was a musician, man. Full scholarship. Full scholarship to Bethune Cookman College, music education, yada, 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 right? And uh, one day, no bullshit. Shit. I walked out of the music building and I saw this chick that looked like Brandy. Had to have her. Nigga, I woke up in Iraq, nigga. Oh, what? <laughs> that's pretty much. Wait, that's pretty much. <laughs> shit. Bro, bro, look at him. Look. For, the, look. Uh, for the pussy challenge. Do you hear me? You might so, take the cake on that one, bro. So, true, true story. True story. True story. True story. I always had this thing for Brandy, right? So, saw this chick look like Brandy, you know, had to have her. We start talking, blah, 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 blah. She said her stomach hurt one day, you know. And uh, throwing up and all that type of shit. So we went to Halifax, you know, right there in Daytona Beach. I cussed that white lady. I come and come, congratulations, we're pregnant, bitch. Congratulations to who, bitch? I'm in college. I can't, no, no. And then joined the military. I thought I was doing good joining the Air Force and shit. Yeah. I didn't know they go to war too, but God damn it, here we are. So, yo, oh yeah, Air Force, get down and get dirty. Man, I did Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Southern Watch, and Operation Horn of Africa. I was on a um, team called FARP. Ford arming refueling point. So basically, uh, regardless of the situation, we drop in and fuel up whatever needs to be fueled up under fire or not and get out of there. It sucked. Yeah. Now, here we are. My family often tells me that the military is no place for a black man. Do you feel like that's a true Bullshit. statement? Okay. Right. Um, right now, I'm 100% disabled veteran. Uh, I get a nice check every month. They cancel out all my student loan debt. Man, don't be an idiot. Go. Don't be an idiot. Go. Ain't got nothing else to do. Go. 
<laughs> if, if, if you don't have $100,000 to throw at your child for them to go to college, go. There you go. There you because go. Right now, right now, the biggest issue with debt in our country is student loan debt. That's facts. Come on, man. Yeah. Let Uncle Sam... My, 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 true story. My mama told me, get in there, get everything you can from the white folks and get out and bring it back. Bring it back. And it gets passed down to your kids. Come I mean, on, they, 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 they help There's out. so many skills. Like, I literally just had a conversation with the young lady prior... I got a degree in logistics from the community college of the Air Force that I don't even use. Damn. She just, I got in the tuck. she sat right here and talked about a billion dollar industry with a degree I don't even use. I was like, God damn. Come on, man. Come on. I didn't pay for that. Yeah. What, Hit me. What would you say about all the mental illness people come back from being in war or military? If you're black, you got mental illness before you go in there anyway. Next. <laughs> From the trenches, from the trenches. Yeah. How, how many it. years did you serve? Eight. And I, I, we don't want to go through the whole eight, but give me as far as, you know, like one day where you're like, man, this is crazy. I shouldn't be here. This is fucked up. Why am I? Why did I do this? Was there ever a situation where you questioned yourself? No. For being a military? Um, again, in my environment, everything I do is a choice. OK, I, I was joking earlier, but you can go left. You can go right. Right. Okay. I didn't have to go to the military. I could have grinded out, been a music teacher at a high school. How much money would I have been making? Mm, I don't want to talk about it. You see what I'm saying? So I don't, I want to dispel the myth. The military, pause. The United States Air Force, I'll do that. The United States Air Force is probably the best place for a black man. Okay. A lot of people won't agree with that. Number one, you got to test higher to be in there. School's got to be higher. Okay. There you go. And they expect a whole lot more. Your rank is not predicated on how many push-ups and sit-ups and all that kind of stuff you do. You got to take a test. You got to pass it. So that is a great arena to where you got to be twice as good as them to get half of what they got, right? Yeah. But it instills so much of, well, God damn, look what I did. That shit is not easy, bro. Like I said, anybody can, we can do whatever we want. It's in your genome to be the best at everything on this planet. That's how the genome was written. Yeah. You got that. So we can get into that if you want to, but no, man, yeah. we can talk genomes. Uh, yeah. Now, I'm curious, for just for you even shooting a gun. Yes. Is that something that was before the military that you was already, you know, coming from your parents, stuff that you was already kind of... Yeah, dad was a cop, right? So dad was a cop and a pilot before I was even born, like maybe 10 years before I was even born. Wow. Right? So um, growing up in a household, firearm safety, you know, I was the kid. Dad would come home in the middle of the night. Boy, what you doing up? Wait, no, you so you can tell me what you did. That's the mm, kind of kid I was. Amazing. And he would tell me stories, and I would just be like, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. But one thing Dad did for us, he encouraged us in the aviation side, but he told us, you, you don't want to be a cop. Ain't no real money in this. Mm. I mean, we found out at the end that it was, but it's not the life you want to live. My mom was an RN, right? She told me, no, do better than me. You don't want to be giving people baths and changing diapers every fucking day. Mm. That was the mentality of the house. Okay. So we had two people making hundred thousand dollars a year telling now you want to do better than this. Okay. Yeah. So do you look at a just a firearm as safety? Do you look at it as used for safety, for protection, or for sign of force? Just in your um, just your mentality. Fine line between the two. Okay. <clears throat> safety and protection. The reason I say safety and protection, because anything spoken about on the offensive side, now we got a legal issue. Oh. Okay. One thing that I love that I learned from the military is that when we were downrange, we were told we were not to fire until fired upon. The first time I was told, I was like, fuck what? <laughs> so you telling me they got to shoot at me first. I see them. And then I can shoot back. He's like, yeah, that's what we train you to do. That's crazy. Think about that. As crazy as that sounds, how much training do you think we went through? Now, oh. don't get it twisted. Let me get this out of the way real quick. Just because you was in the military don't mean you know how to shoot a gun. Shut the fuck up. No. No, no. The military has every single job the civilian world does. Yeah, you go through how many weeks of basic training, we introduce you to it, and then you go do your regular job. If your regular job is not guns every day, you suck at guns, period. Don't get it twisted. Just because you was a cop don't mean you know what you're doing. The, the average cop um, success rate in a contingency is 30%. Why you think everything gets shot up when cops start shooting? That's true. Because they can't freaking shoot. They're required to shoot 50 rounds a year. To qualify, they can't shoot. Oh, well, I got my license to carry. Nick, first of all, you drove here and passed 200 people with a license to drive to drive every day. Don't know the fuck they're doing. So, what makes you think you know what you're doing? Just you got a license to carry. You got a license to carry. That don't mean you know how to shoot. 
You don't have a license to shoot. You got a license to carry. Next question. How many people do you think have guns and doing the wrong shit with them? Like, as far as gun safety, ninety six percent. And what what are some of stupid things you've seen people do with guns? Just like as far as you know, carrying them or shooting them. The with? stupidest thing I've ever seen um, people do. I'm talking about our people now. I don't care about nobody else, right? Yeah. Um, the stupidest thing I've seen our people do was hear that we don't have to take a class to carry them, so we don't take a class. He who knows not, knows not, he knows not, is a fool. Understand? Amen. So our issue, and I'm going to talk to my brothers now, the biggest issue in the black community is a black male ego. We think we know, and we don't. Hmm. Because as, as little boys, we've been traumatized by our dads who didn't know any better. We were punished for not knowing. We weren't punished for not learning. Perfect example. Most black men in here... You know, there is a male figure in the family. Hey, boy, go bring me that 3-8 socket rinse. You're like, what the fuck is a 3-8 socket rinse? So you're a six-year-old. So you walk over, you grab a ratchet and walk back. Boy, don't you know the 3-8 socket rinse? No, 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 no. Now you feel like shit. So that is stealing you to act like you know even when you didn't. That's why there's so much conflict in our households. There's so much conflict in our, in our communities. That's why your ego so jacked up because you don't want to humble yourself down to learn something. You don't want to submit to another man to elevate. That's a whole man. other podcast, but let's man, go. Nah, that's, that's deep as fuck, though. You are trained with a sniper. Yeah. Um, what distance do you feel like, you know, you're, you could feel like you're accurate as far as shooting My a mentor took me out. This is last year. My mentor, uh, shout out to Buck Doyle, man. Um, okay, we'll, Buck. we'll talk about him in a minute. Okay, Buck. Um, he, he took me out, AR-15, 223, 556. Five, Took me out to a mile on a man-sized target. Yeah. Mm. Damn. Okay, a mile. Yeah. What do you feel like as far as you know with kids? All we had back in the day was maybe Golden Eye or some shit on uh, Nintendo sixty four. Okay. But now these Call of Duty games, you know, we kind of know what these guns are. We most kids can tell you the names of guns, but then Call of Duty came out and started making shooting a little more over sensationalized. Uh, over sensationalized. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts when you see like? how that portrays when someone, when you have a young kid naming pistols that probably back in the 80s, a kid out of sight of the military would not know what this was. Uh, um, that's fine. Because our white counterparts, they, they, they know this stuff. You okay. I mean? But I think the issue is our white counterparts are teaching the safety along with it. So uh, your next question would probably be, how old is a child? How old should a child be when we start teaching them firearm safety, firearm responsibility? Correct. And, aunt, go ahead. and I want to ask it like this. I want to pref preface it like this. Normally, a father walks in his son's room, 14, 15 years old. He see him on the internet holding a gun and he'll chastise him. Where'd you get that gun from? Oh, blah, 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 blah. You know, like what? Mm -hmm. So that means, you know, you you busted in on your son holding a gun. You, he got it from somewhere and you may, you know, you, you may whoop him, get the gun, take it away from him, whatever. But there's no follow conversation about actually gun safety after that. You're right. Should there be more so like, you know, the way a kid might come in, you might come in and find condoms in your kid's room. Mm -hmm. So like, okay, we have to have that conversation now. Exactly. Should it be more of that? Or maybe the father doesn't know. Like, damn, I never used a gun before. You out here waving it on Instagram and I don't know what the hell's going on. Get that out of my house. So again, we're going back to the black male ego, right? You said father, so we deal with that, not just yeah. his mom. Okay. It's the father's, again... Remember those times when you was in school, you were in school, excuse me, when you were in school and you brought home some homework and you asked mom or dad for help and that math was more advanced than what they did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, facts, right, baby. Baby, I can't, hey, hey, baby, hey. You know what I'm saying? So it's our responsibility as parents, I'm gonna say something real fucked up in a minute. It's our responsibility as parents to foresee the inqui inquisition of our children, right? Perfect right. example. Texas DPS states that you will be brought up on criminal negligence if a child gains access to a firearm because you left it in a place in which you knew or should have known the child would gain access. So that child that has a gun in his room playing around negligent discharge hurts himself or someone else. The state is going to say you should have known that child would gain access to that firearm. Mm. Yes, where, sir. Where should you keep your gun at if you have a, a kid in the house? Okay. Let's go back. How old is your child when you teach your child firearm safety? Yeah, that's the question. Okay, because now, well, I'll, I'll play it backwards. Okay, let's just say you keep your gun in the safe, right? You can send a little lockbox right next to the bed, okay? 
middle of the night, bloom, you hear somebody kicking your door in, they're hauling ass to your room, ready to spray you up. How long is it going to take you to get that gun out of their safe? I think about that. Okay. So, <clears throat> perfect example. I can leave my gun on the counter if my child already knows firearm safety. Now, go back to my question. How old should a child be before we teach them firearm safety? Garbage. How old were you when your parents taught you not to stick your finger in the light socket? Touch the stove. Play with knives. You couldn't even talk. But Barely still, could walk. But, but I still did it, though. Uh, you still did it because you didn't know the consequences. No, I'm saying I did it, and then I figured out the consequences. You see, because you weren't given this, the, the resources prior to. Perfect example. Some stuff you just didn't play with, right? Mommy and daddy taught you look left, look right, look left before you walk across the street. Did you play with traffic? Some shit you just not going to do, right? But it's, it's a parent's responsibility to show. Perfect example. Um, my son, of course, I teach him, teach him, teach him. And then we had a situation in Balk Springs. Remember that kid got shot in the head in Balk Springs with a cop? Roy Oliver shot the guy? Yep. I woke him up in the middle of the night and I showed him what was going on. This is why dad don't want you roaming around acting a fool. Because people do stupid shit like that. We can't be afraid to expose our children to the bad things in life. We have to do that because guess what? You don't know what you don't know. Children are inquisitive. They want to learn these things. But because we don't know and we're terrified, we're afraid. We had an early tra childhood trauma. We want to keep our children away from it. No, the easiest way to keep your child away from danger is teach them the danger. That's it. Teach them the danger. How many times did you cut the grass as a young child and you knew not to stick your hand under the damn lawnmower? That's facts. Come on, bro. That's facts. It's, it's no different. Let's do it like this, man. I want to paint some scenarios and uh, we're going to go through all the, you know, the business stuff. But um, yeah. we talked about, uh, you know, uh, let's say Philandro Castile. Yes. Uh, good one. Where you get pulled over, you have a license to carry, but uh, you're a black man mm -hmm. and you get pulled over, let's say by a white or, you know, another, right. another, a, a cop by another race. Right. Um, you know you have a gun in the car. What is the proper procedure knowing you have a concealed license to carry, you have a gun in the car, but the law is rolling you over for whatever reason, mm -hmm. and you know this could go one or two ways? Like, what is the procedure that a man could take? Okay, first thing we like to teach is thought process, okay? What do we know? Inevitable. Before we know anything about gun, before we know anything about cops, you know you're a nigga, right? It starts with that. Okay, so let's start there, okay? And everybody's scared of who? Niggas. All right, so if you know everybody's scared of niggas, and we're going to use the idea of our fear for my life starting off with you a nigga. Let's act accordingly. So first let me say this. First things first, have everything set up. Kill the attitude. Fair? Right. Come on, man. Like, let's be real. My dad said it best years ago. You can be right. You can be dead right. Yes. Yeah. 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 You can be right. You can be, dead, be right. dead right. So... Here's, here's the issue with Philando Castillo. Rest in peace to the brother. A couple things happen in that scenario. One thing we got to remember, we got to remember that cops are humans as well. Right. The problem with us, black folks, and law enforcement, one moment, we know they ain't trained worth a damn. We know they ain't got their shit together. But then we want to hold them accountable for being trained. <laughs> right. Pick a poison. Okay. Me as a black man, I know I'm scary, okay? I know that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have my license, registration, proof of insurance, and license to carry in my left hand and my right hand on that steering wheel when he comes to my car. Mm. By the time he, you know, let's go through the whole traffic stop. I'm driving, I see red and blue lights. I look up, red and oh, blue right. lights. I turn my hazard lights on to let him know that I know that he's there. Okay. I'm slowing down, I'm not, I'm not stopping, I'm not putting over, I'm getting my license, registration, proof of insurance, and license to carry in my left hand. Okay. Dome lights on, and as I pull over, I'm letting the windows down. He comes up to my car, my right hand's on the steering wheel, my left hand is there. Boy, do you know why I stopped you? You're doing 76 and a 75. Oh my God, that's way too fast. I apologize, sir. Mm. What does he have to do? You got a gun in here? Sure, dude. Where's it at? Which one? How many you got? All of them. <laughs> well, you keep your gun with his, I keep my gun where it is. No problem. So when they say something like, well, uh, do you have. Um uh, any narcotics in the car? Nope. And they say, do you mind stepping out? Can we check? Can we search your car? You cannot search my car, but I'll gladly step out if you need to talk to me about something. Mm, okay. 
Now, mind you, if that could happen, then a lot of people might be either warrant or they know it's about to go left. Well, let's talk they, about they, it. They get, a little, they get a little shaky. Oh, let's shit. Let's talk about it. I knew I was speeding any goddamn way. <laughs> right. Nigga, you know you speeding? True story. One time I was on, I was on 30. I snatched the paint off his fucking car when I passed the car. I was going so fast. I knew it. Damn. Damn. I gave him a headache when I drove his fucking car. Come Damn. on, man. Like, let's be fair. You know you got warrants. You know you speeding. Why you got an attitude with this motherfucker doing his job? He don't have a good job. Let's be fair. Yeah, right, right, right. He don't have a good job. He has a regular job. Have, bro, this, my daddy told me, and it messed me up years ago. He said, boy, I remember when I was rookie and I was slick sleeve. If I had to get out my car in the rain, in the cold, in the extreme heat to stop you from doing something stupid, it's going to be a long day. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> it's going to be a long day. Come on, bro. God damn it. Everybody in the police department that has a significant amount of skill or rank is not going to be the ones pulling you over, bro. Mm. That is facts. That That's is the facts. bottom of the barrel. That is facts. That is facts. It's the bottom of the barrel. So now you, you, let me use you. Yeah, yeah, let's you go. You driving your dope boy Porsche. Yeah, all right, you got let's your go. dope boy shoes on and dope boy, dope boy hat and dope boy hoodie, right? 100 degrees inside, you got a hoodie on and shit. Yeah, questions you know, already. And I remember your ass from high school, you slept with my girl and shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we're in a small town. <laughs> you did what it is. Yeah. So I pull you over. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Go ahead and say, hey. Take me with you. <laughs> hey, life's best rate proof is it? Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, hey, I get it. I'm paying my ticket. All right, so all right, we'll, we'll, we'll stick with that. I'm sure there's people in the comments that may say, hey, this may go left or right, but. Yes, it, it, can, it, it often can. However, here's a couple things. Now, in, in our courses, I do teach them how to adequately park to protect themselves. I do teach them what to say to protect themselves because you, you got to understand, I'm also a TCO instructor, Texas Commission Law Enforcement. So yes. I teach law enforcement as well. So I give them the game from the opposite side. They know what to say to let them know, hey, let's follow protocol. Let's keep it G. Write this ticket. Go on about my business. Because now, you said that. You said parking. You should park like. So, 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 so you said Flannel Castile. Yes. Right? If y'all remember the video, you saw the dash cam. His person, you know, the, the, the personal cams, they always going to go off. They, they always, the battery going to be dead. Or, you know, they're they going to bump it on the way out. It's going to fall off. It's just not going to work. Something going to happen. So you got the dash cam. And in the dash cam, all you see is the back of Flannel's car. And you see the cops standing there. So his narrative audio is all that you have to go on. You heard him say, don't reach for it, don't reach for it, and he shot him. That's did we see Flando reach for it? No. Did we see him not re did you did we see him not reach for it? No. Okay. It's not about Big Brother Denzel said it best. It's not about what you know, it's about what you can prove. Mm, God damn. All right, let's do it like this. Um, there was a recent shooting um, yes. of a young uh well, there's always a recent shooting, but there was a uh, a school shooting. Where um, I don't know if it was a boy or girl or it was a transgender. I don't. It was, yeah, it was transgender yep. that went into a school, shot the windows out, yep. went in there, shot six people. Yep. Cops came in, put him, her down, yep. and things like that. So we talk about gun safety and things about what we should do next and what should go forward. Do you believe teachers should have gun li license, gun license to carry in schools? I believe anybody that has a firearm in the capacity to protect anyone should have the adequate training to do so. Okay. So you wouldn't mind a third grade teacher who has a training to have his firearm in school to Game protect. We, we, we got, it's a couple instances across the uh, country where in, the, in, in a, a couple parking lots across the country over the last 10, 20 years, the PE coach happened to have his license carry and, and save the day. But we're not going to, we're not going to talk about that on the news. Oh man, we don't it's talk not about the narrative. Yeah, we don't talk about that. No, we don't talk about that. You, you see what I'm saying? So, of, of course, in your mind, and this is what's funny to me. This is what's funny to me. You don't want your child being taught by an individual who's carrying a gun. Cool. But you don't know anything about the curriculum and the ideology and the brainwash that they're teaching your child. Let's leave that alone. But that same person, you're expecting them to jump in front of a bullet for your child. Make it make sense. Now, your next ignorant comment is going to be, well, that's what you signed up for. You know that we signed up for that. Okay, well, homeschool your kid. Homeschool your kid. God damn. Yeah, yeah, it's going to get raw. It's going to be a lot of people mad in the comments. All right, so, so when you see situations where a gun is pulled out, and let's say in a street fight, okay. and then a gun is pulled out, where people, you know, you from the old school to where people used to get it from the shoulders. Yeah. But now they're quick to pull triggers, no training. They just have guns on them. Yeah. And what are your thoughts when you see those, and when you say, say laws, hey, you could just buy a gun, you're 18, 
no felonies. You could buy a gun. There mean guns are everywhere. Gun where are Texas gun shows everywhere. So that means there's probably when you walk into a mall, maybe forty percent of people might have a gun on them without knowing, even though you're probably not supposed to take them all. Being in a being in Texas, how do you feel about like just an economy where everyone has a gun? Like everyone, let's say in a hundred years, everyone's able to carry guns. Cool. You like that? I mean, you don't feel as I, I don't. Let me tell you why. The chances of you drawing your firearm and having an adequate amount of training to shoot me and kill me slim to none. So do you think? So what do you feel went wrong with a uh, take? What, what do you feel went wrong with takeoff? What take do you feel went wrong with takeoff situation? Security wasn't in place. His security wasn't in place. It is what it is. They start firing and it seems like it was random fire. Do you feel like right. proper security so, would have been more yes. accurate? So, of course. So so here we go. You see me in a capacity. Of course, we won't get into too much uh, detail on, on the thing. But you see me in a capacity. My, my head is always on the swivel. Right. I'm never gazing off. I'm never or whatever. I'm always focused. Even my guys are always focused. I got them set up. You've seen how we set up. We're always crossing paths of operation, right? So, and again, if we're in a hot situation, perfect example, one of the fun times, uh, we had to go to a big old concert in a different city, and it was hot. It was crazy. It was, it was insane. But what I like to do doing executive protection with my principal is making sure I am in the way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm that barrier, okay? The reality of it is, I'm, I'm gonna be transparent with y'all, man. Security costs, bro. Security freaking costs. How much do what I have to pay you to catch a bullet from me? Okay, think about that next time you hire, hire security and complain about the prices. Right. Now, the price is going to be based on the level of training and skill and the professionalism that that particular individual has. That's why, that's why a lot of rappers get shot. Well, it's not only cheap labor, so it's two entities to that, right? You hire me for EP and you don't know me and you want me to secure your wife and your kids, how you know I'm not going to sleep with your wife? That's why they hire their homeboys. Because I, I can trust my cousin. I can trust my homeboy. I don't know this nigga. Yeah, he might be the one that kept Takashi 6 9 alive, but I don't know this nigga. Facts. You see what I'm saying? But on the flip side, because it's my homeboy, I think he got my best interest at heart, but he doesn't have the training. When bullets start frying, he going to run too. Yeah, because he want to live. Because he want to live. Don't pay him that much. He's not trained to go in there and handle business. You, you see what I'm saying? So that's the catch 22. So now I got to pay all this money to a nigga I don't know, but that's where we got the academy. That's, that, that was a spill I gave for the, for the heavy hitters. Hey, keep your homeboy. Send him to us so we can get him trained. So now we got the best of both worlds. Let's say you're protecting a client. Yes. And you see the gun come out. Game over. <laughs> Game over. I, what is your... Done. <laughs> Done. 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 I don't have, I don't have time. Bullets yeah. move at 1,100 feet per second, bro. Yeah. So here's what we teach. The bad guy already knows he's going to do something bad. He's got the drop on you. Okay. You see what I'm saying? He's already got, I'm playing catch up the whole time. I'm in defensive mode. Defense means you got the fucking ball. Gotcha. You see it? Yeah. Now, at the end of the day, when you brandish that weapon, it's go time. Now, um, how much training does it take to become that aware of your surroundings and that think that critically? Because I'm assuming that you can perceive a threat way before anybody else can. Um, I do this every day. Um, I will say this. When it comes down to firearms training and uh, threat response and contingency uh, stability, um, you're going to lose 20% 20 a week. If I teach you something right now, every seven days you lose 20%. So it's, it's, it's a very, very perishable skill. We, we do it every day. Yeah, Man, you know, one of us was in a bank robbery. Okay. And I'm just curious, uh, what should a person do in a bank robbery scenario, like if they have a firearm on them? Should they try to neutralize a suspect? Okay. Or should they just allow the bank to get robbed and say, hey, you know, right. get the money and go? Great question. True answer. What does your skill set say you can do? Oh, let's say we could, well, I could put them down. Game over. Honey, <laughs> business. Damn. <laughs> Is what it is. He, I mean, he, but he, just go. he just passed the note. <laughs> no, no, no. Game no, no. over. So, wait, oh, totality of circumstance, right? Yeah, yeah. If yeah. he passed the note, you see a guy pass a note. Okay, is is that a, what, is that is that a uh, is that his total amount on his? But if you see the, she starts shaking and doing all that kind of stuff. Okay, I'm I'm at the ready. He's facing that way. I'm at the ready. I got a nonviolent posture, so he doesn't know I'm I'm at the ready. 
But if I see a gun or if he points a gun, then good night, church. Yeah. <laughs> it is. But wait a minute. But wait a minute. But let's go back. Let's go back. If I am not adequately trained, regardless of what I told you, regardless of what I posted on social media, my adrenaline is going to be running. I'm going to be scared. I'm about to shit myself because I know I ain't doing what I was supposed to do in training. I talked all that shit with my homeboys. I got my license and carry two years ago, but that was the last time I shot my gun. So, so I, I so I gotta ask you because we had this conversation uh -huh. at one of the hubs. Mm -hmm. Detroit Dust, he was showing niggas how to get out of the tactical uh, uh, moves you of people. Do this shit. <laughs> All right, we we had we we was going in. So, what is your what is your thoughts on like the Detroit Dust and the people that are teaching them? Are they really teaching them real shit? Is that can that really happen? Is that bullshit? <laughs> that 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 I would definitely get you killed. Um, <laughs> wait wait. Okay, wait, you know, no, let's go back. Big no, shout wait, out. Wait, 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 no, B2B Savage had a gun pointed at him. Yeah. He got, he, he closed in on him enough to um, move, grab his arms, did a little move that technically saved his life at that time. If he didn't do that, he could have been, he was dead to rights. All right, so it, there's a couple things. One, the probability of that actually happening, consider that. And two, we have to take into consideration, this is what we do. This is what I train my guys to do. <clears throat> there are a few things that we look at. What is the probability of this guy actually having the training to do what he wants to do? However, don't take that for granted. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. So, any situation I, I've ever encountered, I met them with my 100% all the skills I got. I don't give a damn what your skill level is. I'm giving you all of it because I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I'm giving you... 25 years of hot shit right then. Like gamble. it is what it is. I don't I don't know. My life is so valuable. I I'm I'm afraid to gamble that. Well no, I'm not gonna eh, I'm not gonna do them too bad. I'm gonna kinda I'm gonna hesitate a little bit. No. Done. That's what, Your mama sitting on the front row Saturday morning. All black. <laughs> Game over. T-shirt. T-shirt, man. <laughs> T-shirt. Fast. Hey, Heat the press up. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Now, one of the things that, you know, if anybody follows your page, yes. you're also a pilot. Yes, yes. Um, how did you get into that? Dad well, obviously, your dad was a pilot, dad but I'm me, saying, yeah, how yeah. did you actually get your own plane? And Man, let, let, let me, okay, so let me, let me give it to you. So, dad, first black cop, first black pilot. My brother, um, he's an Apache test pilot for the Army. Oh, wow. Right? A couple years ago, we, all, all of us can fly. I just didn't, quote, unquote, have my paperwork. I was, you know, keeping a gangster, whatever. And we sitting down at the... Uh, we sit down at Thanksgiving, after Thanksgiving on the patio. My brother was like, hey, dad, you know, O's lazy and shit, so I think you need to buy a helicopter so me and you can fly the helicopter and just pretty much fuck him. I said, nigga, who, what you, what you, you disrespectful, little nigga. Like, what is you? Yeah, so he reaches in his pocket and he slaps his pilot license on the table. Bah! My mom was like, don't be doing my baby like that. I say, thanks, mom. I'm like, fuck, what's wrong with y'all? And my dad's like, nah. He shouldn't be doing you like that. Blah. It's like, you motherfucker. They, they doubling down. Okay. So I said shit back. This was 2019, 2020, something like that. I said, all right, bet. And then year rolled around. This is the following end of July, like the last day of July. I said, you know what? Fuck them niggas. I drove to Aviator Air right there in Grand Prairie. I walked in there. Yeah. Saw a little white boy sitting down eating little cheese sandwiches and shit, you know, dipping little cucumbers or whatever. And I said, hey, I need to get my pilot's license. You, you ain't doing nothing. What's your name? He's like, Ben, come in. You my fucking instructor. Let's go. I got to have my um, pilot's license by Thanksgiving. He said, sir, most people take a year to get their pilot. I ain't got time for that shit. Come on, man. Let's go. Mm. So hopped into school. Pretty much knew most of the stuff. It was just a refresher because, like I said, Pops taught me. And um, went and got all my license and stuff done. And I called mom. I said, mama, don't tell nobody. Got my pilot's license. Blah, 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 blah. Whoop the whoop. This side's going down Thanksgiving. She said, my baby, my baby. Yeah, shit, that's right, we finna rock it. Yeah. Came home, literally drove past the house. We drove from Dallas all the way to Leesburg. Drove past the house, drove to the airport where my dad learned to fly. Yeah. Walked in and said, hey, hear the story, gave him a story. I was like, oh shit. So anytime you go to a different airport to rent an aircraft, you gotta qual and cert on the aircraft. Yeah. So I went up, I'm flying. I literally flew over the house because the house is in the pattern. I flew over the house like twice. Damn. In a circle, just to see if they caught it. And I landed it. <clears throat> Got signed off, boom, came to the house. It was a Wednesday, Thursday, Thanksgiving, blah, blah, blah. Same scenario, sitting on the patio. I said, hey, I got something to say. <laughs> <laughs> Mom's holding the camera like this. Yeah. Right? 
I said, you two niggas was real disrespectful to me last year. My dad said, oh, we shouldn't be disrespectful. My brother like a cigar. Fuck you, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I handed the paperwork. Like, I had, like, my hard card hadn't even come in. It was still paperwork. Yeah. I literally had the paperwork in a Ziploc bag, right? And I passed it to my brother's wife, and she started reading it off. My dad sat up, and he snatched the paper. He said, what, boy? I said, no. Wheels up tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Wheels Let's up. Go. Yeah. That's how I went. Wait, wait, has it, does it ever, and I know we're all law-abiding citizens here, but did it, like, once you start flying and have your license, did you, like, at least have a thought of, like, man, I can hit Columbia and, you know, the cocaine, we could drop it. We could just deliver a pack. I mean, it, it, it must at least go through your mind at once, going back to the 80s in Miami. Like, it, what, what could be done? Game over. <laughs> Game, over. <laughs> Game over. I mean, it has to, it has to at least, when you Next question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. No, Snowfall. No, Snowfall. No, I got yeah. Snowfall. I, do, I got it. I do got to ask because again, I follow your page. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you be in the helicopter and, and one of the hashtag, one of your hashtags is polygamy. Polygamy life. No, it's not. It's, it's that you saw polyamorous. Oh, polyamorous. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay. Here okay, we go. Okay. Let's do it. Let's uh, do it. All right. So do you do you subscribe to this? Okay. Let me. <laughs> I have an amazing wife and yes, an amazing beautiful. girlfriend. There you go. You put it up. Get on. High value man. High value man. High value man. These niggas reading hashtags. <laughs> Bro, we on the hashtag. We know what it is. We know what it means. He's a, he's a trained arm. <laughs> of course he has. He, he, can, he can defend his home. Facts. <laughs> a lot of you niggas Facts. can't even defend yourself. Facts. You don't deserve that. Now, don't get it twisted. Now, my... The queen and the goddess, they'll shoot you for I will. Right. I try to de-escalate, you know what I'm saying? I train them as well. So like my, my wife, she's actually an instructor. They have, she has big, big plug, tactical social worker underscore PLLC. Um, she has a thing called boundaries and cocktails for the queens, right? They'll come out on a Friday night, literally have cocktails, have a little food, finger foods and stuff. And they'll talk about all the traumas and everything where you got to be mentally and emotionally to defend yourself in whatever situation you've been in or might be in. And Saturday morning, they running and gunning. Yeah, yeah. So going back to BTB Savage, man, he had a situation yes. where he had a home invasion. Yep. A gun pulled. He's wrestling guy, and he called for his girl to, uh, you know, help defend, like right. shoot, shoot the shot. Yeah. Yeah. And she wasn't trained, but she did what she had to do mm -hmm. to make what have happened. Do you feel like relationship couples should go like part of like even us having a house together, living together? We should both be at a gun range. We okay. should both learn to shoot. I'll say what I say all over the country. Where's the main camera? Right there, sir. If you are worth the salt that you piss, that woman will be able to use every gun in that household just as good as you. Talk about it. That's it. Talk about it. So there's no such thing as a girl gun, dumbass. Yes, not at all. <laughs> they, they might have a pink color, a little, a little yeah. pink color to it. <laughs> Fucking stupid. Yeah. Fuck. Designer guns, you don't like the Louis Vuitton guns? <laughs> Bro, your dumbass going to answer the door first. You're dead first. Okay, so now what's she going to do? <laughs> pew, 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 with a little fuck. Right, now, what do you what do you think about like man these these kids with the switches and all these yeah. modifications on their guns? So like again, we can't blame everything on rap music and the rap videos, right? right? Right. Parents, we as parents, we have to intervene. You know, hey, I understand this music, I understand it's cool. My son, I grew up Dr. Dre, Easy E, N.W.A., the whole '90s conglomerate when it was starting to come in. Okay, but I had the inside scoop because my dad was already a cop. You see what I'm saying? So I understood the farm safety. So I was picking out, I was on MTV BET like, like he holding that gun wrong. That's real stupid right there. But you know what I'm saying? So you didn't know that. This is why we encourage parents, parents, look, if you have a child, there's so many things in 2023 that you are going to have to spearhead and be ahead of because God damn it, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, they're teaching your child every fucking thing that is ridiculous. So you got to be ahead of it. And one thing that uh, it, it was as crazy as it sounds, we joke about it. And I was telling my son about it. Many, many years ago, when I was a child, my dad was uh, police department. And I remember distinctively, he had a two live crew cassette tape. And he had an NWA cassette tape because it was illegal to play that in the public back then. Facts. It was illegal. FCC put a, put a hole on a lot of that stuff. Why you think? That's why they had to go to court. Uncle Luke. If it wasn't for Uncle Luke, there's a lot of shit with me on the radio right now. He put his ass on the line. He is 
he, y'all didn't give him his flowers. He put his ass on the line for y'all to be able to say the shit y'all say right now. And literally, cops had to listen and study this music to drive around with the window down and listen to write tickets and put people in jail. So think about it. What if parents did what my dad did for work right now? Think about it. Mm-hmm. How many things have has your perfect? I don't know how old y'all are, but we was looking for VHS tapes and magazines. Yeah, they got it's right on the cell phone, bro. It's in their pocket. If your child, uh, most in most schools right now, your child probably don't even have books. They got a cell phone. What do you need a book for? Yeah, no books. Come on. So it's our responsibility as parents to spearhead this stuff. I ain't got time for that. I gotta work. Hey, it is what it is. The streets gonna grab your child. At the end of the day, we, we got to take some accountability for this. We can't just make it everybody else's fault. When it comes to the world, yeah. as we see, like the dollar bill is destabilized. It's gonna be crazy. I was gonna. Ask, what are some of the repercussions to that? And what, do you think it will come to a type of warfare that people, like normal citizens, will have to be involved in? Here's what I say um, with the whole China um, and uh, China, Russia, even uh, Iraq, Iran, Japan, even Saudi Arabia has done it. UAE has done it, have walked away from the American dollar when it comes down to the fuel and the oil. Right. There's an old movie that I encourage you all to go back and watch called Mad Max. Right. The Fall of Civilization. Shout out to uh, Tupac and, and, and Death Row. For that whole uh, the dome situation, they were reenacting that that Mad Max. I say, prep yourself, train yourself for that worst case scenario. Perfect example: we live in a metroplex, right? So one thing we do in, in the military in our in, in our war college, um, first thing we do, we're gonna take out the resources, take out the lights. We're gonna take out your fuel. We're gonna take out your electricity. If 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 everything goes black right now, the average oh my god, the average person would last seven days. Yeah, I'm gonna be done. You know, you know, because I, I always think uh, if so, if somebody just fly over Dallas and drop an EMP, lights out, literally, like, no, no, lights, it's, cell phones, it's, it's, cars, everything. all that, Every, planes yeah. flying out, the, dropping out the air. Yeah, I mean, you got glide slope, you won't drop out the air, but yeah, yeah, but it's like, are we helicopter people, gonna drop out there? Yeah, goddamn right. <laughs> I'm, and, and this is going to lead to my next question. Uh, if there was the zombie apocalypse, yeah. how trained are you? How f- trained are you feel like you are to survive? How long do you think? you Oh, me survive? and my family good. Me and my family yeah. good. We good. Are you over prepared? Over, yeah, over prepared. Yeah. That's great. I bet I rather have it, and not need it, need it, not have it. You know, back in the day, we had a little condom in your wallet. Same thing. Now, thanks. Uh, and me and Rook I always talk about this. What is your trust in humanity at that point? Like zero. <laughs> Zero. No. Okay. So, and this is one thing, one of the things we teach in our courses. Yeah. Please understand, if you are prepared for that moment, you, you got a generator, we got fuel, you got uh, canned goods, you got your weapons, right? Please understand the people that you shoot first go look just like you probably live next door. Newsflash. If you got food and I got a gun, we got a gun. I mean, we got food. We got food. We got food. Yeah. So, if the um, purge was to happen. Uh, what what weapon you uh, what's your weapon of choice? What you running with? Depending on where I am, what I'm doing. Uh, you in the heart of downtown? Da- uh, downtown. I will not be in the heart of downtown Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, and I know what's coming. No. I on, know bro. what's coming. We know we know what day the purge is gonna be, yeah, bro. We know the day. Come on, dog. <laughs> Stop playing. No. All right, so you're in the country. You got a little small duck off cabin. Facts. What weapon are you keeping nearby? Um, I would run a patrol. I, I'd have a patrol team which I already got set up. Um. Got a patrol team, somebody on a roaming patrol, somebody on Overwatch, and then we just switch it out. Okay, okay. I want to ask you something about laws. Um, we talked about extendos and you know these guns and these, you know they're switching them up, they're automating these guns. Uh, what do people know about, or what do you feel the lack of knowledge of state laws when it comes to guns? Texas is yes. wide open. But they may not know what Chicago, uh, Illinois is doing, or Michigan, or New York. Who, who has the worst gun laws? Uh, oh, man. Thank and you. the most lax. The most, okay. The more strict gun laws, the strictest gun laws are in your highest crime states. Because the good people can't defend themselves. Mm. The bad guy doesn't give a fuck about your law, bro. Are you fucking kidding me? Right. right. It's like nine laws broken before an active shooter goes active. 
Let's think about this shit. That's, that's right. Active shooter goes to a school. A bunch of laws are broken before the guns even pull out. You got the gun on campus, bro. But what we do, Jersey, New York, Chicago, California, uh, name another state that's got a high crime rate because the good people can't defend themselves. Mm. Think about it. Even in the state of Texas where you can have all the guns you want, you call 911, how long is it going to take? Oh, Nick, as a matter of fact, we right across the street from the fucking police station. Right, right. Call 911 right now and hit the watch. See what happens. 20 minutes later. Easy. And they motherfuckers right across the street. Yeah. yeah. Come on, bro. So you are your first responder. And you got to understand that this whole political ideology, your Democratic run states are your most crime ridden states. And they have the worst gun laws for the, they're protecting the bad guys. Wow. Facts. So when it comes to traveling state to state with reciprocity, a, okay. Yeah, reciprocity with a gun in your car or whatever. Okay. So if you have a, a state of Texas license, it'll we'll teach you and show you what states you, you know your license has reciprocity in. However, what reciprocity means is kind of like growing up, right? Mama's got a set of rules at the house, right? Can you go visit Auntie House? Yes. Does Auntie have the same rules at Mama House? No, but you better follow Auntie's rules. It's the same thing. So we got Texas license to carry. We go to Louisiana. It's my responsibility before I cross into Greenwood in Louisiana to know Louisiana law. Because when the cop rolls up on me and say, hey, you got, you know, hey, got my license to carry. Cool, you got a Texas license to carry. We're going to honor that. But you broke a Louisiana law that you were supposed to know. So you come on. Go what kind, like what may have broken? Like what, like a bull in the chamber? Like the gun be. on the side of you? Whatever, like, whatever. That's your responsibility to know that state's law. Look it up. Damn, okay. Yes. Yeah. You see the problem we have now? So now... You didn't want to take the, the Texas class because you didn't have to have it no more, black man, right. ego. So now you roll to another state that might not be as favorable. That's, that's now right. you hemmed up. Well, in my state, we ain't got to have a legend to care. Okay, in our state, you do get your ass in the car. So for those that want to travel uh, via, um, uh, you know, plane, Easy. as far as, uh, you know, taking a gun with them. Yeah. What's like, just for those who don't know, like I have a gun, I want to take it with yeah. me. Um, should they just pack, should they, you know, pack it Carry okay. on. I mean, not carry it on. It is but, a process. Uh, okay. It is a process. So, and, and I got this on my YouTube channel. Basically, what's going to happen, you're going to prep your gun, make sure your gun is safe in its lockbox before you get to the counter, before you get out of the car, right? Before you leave the house. It is what it is. Okay. okay. Have your gun in the lockbox prepared like you're supposed to have it prepared. Get to the counter and say, hey, I would like to declare a firearm. No problem. You're going to fill out your little card. They're going to open it, verify that you don't have M on the gun, verify the gun is locked, and the lock box is locked with a TSA lock. Okay, put the card in there, lock the box. It goes under the plane. You go to the, mm. the TSA. It's easy. That's real. That's real. Pause. Yep. Yep. If you flying into New York, please understand, Dallas, That we're going to let you leave. We're going to let you leave. Oh, but when you get to JFK, yeah, it's going to be a problem. They ain't waiting on you. Damn, you don't think Dallas will let you know? Like, hey, I see you flying to LaGuardia. It's not their responsibility. Damn. The, the girl at the counter don't know about that shit. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Okay. I'm curious. Have you seen the movie John Wick? Love him. Have you seen John Wick 4? Love it. Okay, let's go. Now, I'm watching this movie, and I'm saying, man, uh, I don't know the capacity of magaz the, a magazine a pistol carries. Okay, yeah. But I'm, and I need to go back and watch it, but I'm seeing like he's letting a lot of rounds off without having to reload. It's no, movie. which is a movie, so... <laughs> When, when, and I'm curious. No, exactly. I'm curious when you when you watch it as a gun expert. Yeah. Do you get frustrated on the realism of what's going on in John Wick Four? Let's say. Um. Big shout out to Tarrant Tactical. Um. They did. They they worked their ass off training shit out of Keanu Reeves for oh, that. Man. Yeah. So, congrats. Yeah. For um, real. The what 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 he did was he put a lot of focus on training. You know the clearing, the techniques. You know the tactical side of it to where. It's more entertainment to see him dump 30 rounds in a standard mag, reload, okay, shoot 30 more rounds, okay. The small stuff, the gurus of the gun industry, we don't really care about as much as you holding the gun properly, you doing the proper reload, you clearing the room, cutting the pie, slicing the pie, I'm sorry, how are you supposed to, all the other tactics that he's doing correctly, okay? Um, again, Tarrant Tactical out there, at, uh, out there in California, he, he, he did a damn good job making sure that he's doing what he's supposed to do. So I'm not, I'm not tripping on this small shit. Yeah. How often should you clean your gun? Um, how often you shoot it? How often you wash your ass? <laughs> Every time you use it, goddamn, you should. You're supposed to. Sorry. 
You know what I mean? But um, yeah, um, every time you shoot it is a good rule of thumb. However, the manufacturers have also done a great job. Shout out to Glock. Glock is a big one for that. Um, you can you can run a Glock dirty as shit, bro. Like is a Glock can run. A Glock can just run. Um, so, but again, um, you spent your money on it, okay? Um, but if you're training like you're supposed to, it's gonna be some wear and tear. So, after every big range day, I go ahead and knock it out. Yeah, it's it's not it's not a big. It doesn't have to be a big old to do. You don't have to take the thing completely apart and put it completely back together. We got techniques and stuff we do. Uh, what's the most unrealistic thing you've seen in John Wick? I'm going to tell you, because I seen it. I seen he was like leaning up against the wall and he just, he was, he, the other dude was on the other side. And he just like shot through the goddamn wall. Like he already knew where he was. <laughs> he where he was. Um, okay. So I've seen, shout out to Air Force Combat Controllers, man. I've seen these guys do some crazy shit. I've seen these guys do some crazy shit. So Again, John Wick is the upper echelon, the epitome of the tactical. So John Wick, people don't understand what, what he actually is. Right. He's that ex-military special ops. Okay, we go retire you from the military, but hire you to do some shit that we ain't allowed to do, but you done done that shit for so long, and now you just going to do some your own hood nigga shit. That, that's all John Wick is. Yeah. John Wick is, they on some elite hood nigga shit handling business. Because all of those so, are gangs and all that kind of shit. So, yeah. Are there people as talented? Yes. Do they John really? Wick. Yes, fucking right. I know a bunch of them. Yeah, my mentor. Yeah, my mentor is. So you know, there are people who could really like. Yes. Kill 50 people. Bro, yeah. It's, yes. we, it's, it's, some, it's, some, it's, some, it's some it's some monsters, man. That's cra Now that's crazy. It's a monster, I, bro. It, it looked it looks so fantastical in the movie that you bro, would. It's it's I, my my mentor is, is up there. Yeah, and he shot broken, so and he can still do it. Uh, yeah. Who's your mentor? Shout him out one more time. I know nah. you, heard, you said him. Okay, shout out to Buck don't. Doyle. Buck Doyle. Buck Doyle. Buck Doyle. Big shout out plug for him. Uh, he, he's my voluntold mentor. Um, went to one of his classes a few years ago, and I was like, "You're my mentor." He's like, "What voluntold? You have no choice. You're my fucking mentor. Suck it up." Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> now real talk. Big, big, uh, he's, he's, he blew up um, when everybody, everybody realized who he was because he was the one that trained Michael B. Jordan for No Remorse. Yes, which was a that's great book, movie. That's great that's movie. Doyle, yeah. Okay, damn. When you see the body armor used in John Wick where they're using, I don't know if it's Kevlar, but Them he, suits? he's using the suits. What are your thoughts? With it? Is, is technology going to get to that point? They are already there, bro. They're, they're already making. there. So I'm going to say something real. You know, real. Uh, when I was, shout out to Colonel Leroy Eskely. Uh, he was my ROTC instructor um, back in, in the 90s when I was in high school. And he told us, everything you see on TV has been tried seven years prior by the United States government. Correct. That's yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Oh, girl, just say yeah. something. Like, something about that. Like, if you see it in the movie, it's probably already. Oh, yeah. Somebody done tried it. Somebody, come on, bro. It, and that's in every area, too. Don't get it twisted. That's in every area. We're not just talking about gun shit. The spiritual stuff, too. Okay. okay. So, All right. Do you think the uh, the Asians have a Gundam? The who? The Asian? You probably don't know nothing about that. Pacific Rim. A man, a man, a man, that machine. Bro, don't get it twisted. They done tried to be Tony Stark. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't try it. The government done tried it, bro. Like you'd be surprised what goes on in Nevada, bro. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> bro, now, shit. Now, uh, shit. You know what? Next time, you know what? Next time I wear my skunk works hat, bro. Like you, you shit. Now I want to talk about uh uh hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yeah. What is really a lethal form of hand-to-hand -hand combat and what is really just bullshit? Like you see, like what's some jujitsu or or Krav Taekwondo. Maga. Taekwondo. Krav Maga. Mm -hmm. huh? Are any of those is that are those really ways to Defend yourself, all right? Yeah, okay, so so let's be real. Now, we have to understand, when we look at stuff on social media, there's a guy that I follow, he's a Wing Chun instructor, he's amazing. Um, but you gotta understand, in those environments, those environments are controlled, right? Mm -hmm. For those of you who are old enough to understand what Bruce Lee was talking about, in a street fight, a lot of those rules go out of the window. Correct. Okay, so your skills are genuine, like MMA fighters, them motherfuckers is real. Right. That's a street fight, bro. That's a street fight. That's a cage fight. The rules are minimal. It ain't boxing. It ain't a karate competition, right? 
Look at look at your MMA fighters. Look at those styles. It is what it is, man. I because I remember Jet Li. They did an interview. They was like, "Do you think you could whoop Mike Tyson?" He's like, "Hell no, nah, he would kill me." Yeah. <laughs> All, I mean, how many punches does Mike have to land? Fucking one. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on, man. So so if Jackie Chan or Bruce Lee or um, Ip Man is supposed to fight Mike Tyson, dude, first thing I do is punch him in his throat. You got to. You got to get him out of there. You can't. You don't box Mike. What's wrong with you, man? Box no Mike Tyson. What type of skill does it take to actually knock a man out? Not is much. that mechanic or what? You got to know where to hit him. Okay. But at the same time, how many times has this person been hit? Are they conditioned to be hit? Oh. Everybody got a plan to get punched in the face. How many times have you been punched in the face? Now, I want you to uh, not say debunk, but maybe either debunk yeah. or confirm with uh, Lee Harvey Oswald shooting JFK from right, the right up the street. Okay. Uh, six shots. Uh, he had a six. Well, with the rifle he used and Tell us as far as do you feel like based on a moving target? That was only seventy five yards, way too easy. Seventy five yards. Okay, way so that easy. precision wise, that is easily done. Easy. Two shots. Two shots. Um, one so, shot. I mean, we, I mean, we, man, that's that's. So not it should have been one shot if he was, if he's trained properly. Man, let me tell you something, man. <laughs> that is an easy, ridiculous, ridiculously easy shot. He could have done that with a pistol. Wow. He wow. could have done that with a pistol. But the fact of the matter is. They wanted John F.K. dead. Yes. And they wanted to make a statement. So do you feel Lee Harvey Oswald, those two shots reloading, he got that off and you feel- If that was Lee Harvey Oswald, okay. Okay, if that was Lee Harvey Oswald. I mean, he got found in a- you know, He didn't do six shots. He, <laughs> it was only two confirmed shots. Only two But confirmed. we heard six. Where'd they come from? Grassy Knoll? You, you, hey, bro. Okay. The government wants you gone, you gone. Now, like, and I'm just curious, because from a gun expert, I'm just curious, you know- Ridiculously easy shot. Okay, all right. So it could it could have it, from from the uh, from the sixth floor. Uh, that's an easy shot. So so let's talk about okay. So going back to trigonometry, right? So we got the height of the building, the distance of the car, right? Height base. Then we have the hypotenuse. It's going this way. It's shorter distance than that seventy five yards. Mm -hmm. You're looking at probably about sixty seven now. It's nothing. Oh man. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any other situations that with with guns involved that you like? Let's say I have conspiracy conspiracy theory about like that was probably not what happened there. Okay, man. Based based on what I've been through, um, based on what I've seen, goddamn conspiracy theories. If they want you gone, you gone, bro. It's all about who they. It's all it's all about who they want to take the fall for. If they want you gone, you gone, man. Everything we can go all the way back to goddamn Abraham Lincoln, man. If they want you gone, you gone. <laughs> um, if you have to get shot. If I have to get shot, okay. If you have to get shot, where do I want to take that bullet? The fuck? Um. Wait, 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 wait. Because I'm, 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 I, I want to like, let's say you, you when I, I was going to ask you earlier, when you, you said when you're protecting a client and you see a gun come out, you was like, it's game over. And I believe you. But let's say for, for shits and giggles, you were looking that way instead of straight. <laughs> when you turn around and that gun is out, you know you have to protect your client. Where you want to get shot at so it's not Okay. Legal. So if I if I'm if I'm if I if I don't invest, of course yeah. I want to square up. I want to take all the bullets where I'm protected, where I have my plate, where I have my plate carrier, where I have my vest on. Okay. Yeah. Well, good question. If you wanted to uh demobilize someone or immobilize whatever, neutralize a uh, neutralize a threat, where would you hit them to not you don't want to kill them? There's no what the fuck we not even, no, look. Right. Let's clear this conversation. Well, no, up. No, no, so, no, so. You you will not shoot to maim. You so, will not shoot to slow down. So the, you will not shoot to kill. You will shoot to neutralize the threat. I just want them to stop. Yeah. So the so I'll say this: like someone, let's say, is going to kill themselves, and you're a cop, or let's say you're uh, in, in enforcement, and you don't just mentally, you don't want to kill this man. But he's standing in the middle. You have a clear shot. He's just telling, hey, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You want him to stop, not killing himself. You want to shoot him in the spot to where, like, ah, right, this is going to, you shoulder, leg, uh, foot. I mean, if, if you were to say, hey, I'm going to just neutralize Are you asking this. Me from a law enforcement standpoint? From a law enforcement or, standpoint. Okay. Law enforcement standpoint, uh, shout out to the guys who, who, who work those situations that's real traumatic and, and fucked up. Because yeah. the reality of it is, if I shoot this guy, I'm probably going to get sued. It, it, like you said, once you shoot, you, the laws come in play. But if I don't shoot him, 
and he shoots himself, you know. But then I still got to deal with that, right? You yeah. see the kind of mental trauma I'm dealing with. Um, that's when, now we're talking about de-escalation, force continuum, right? Yeah. You got you to gotta be able to talk, bro. Like, think about it. Yeah, I'm good at what I do, but there's a reason why my guys don't get into a whole lot of shootings and a lot of garbage. Because we know how to talk. We know how to de-escalate. There you go. I, I've had clients that paid me upwards of $400 an hour that would have fired me if I got into anything. Damn. I'm paying you this kind of money because I'm trusting you to not get me into any shit. So mm. whatever you got to do to not get me in no shit, not get me into a fight, not get me shot at, not get me scratched, not get me stabbed, get me out of there without the bullshit. That's what you can pay for. You know what I mean? And I want to get all the way deep into it, but have yeah. you had to shoot someone? Yeah. And uh, uh, did it mess you up afterwards? Do you feel like you can, you know? Another like, day at the office. Another day at the office. Mm. Don't even lose sleep. I sleep good. Mm. Okay. 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 Would you take, uh, and, and let's, let's just talk about it real quick. Um, uh, you know, um, again, I met you through uh, Protecting yeah. Bebe and uh, uh, you've done that for many, uh, many celebrities. You didn't train other people to go do that and do that as well. Uh, when it comes to guarding celebrities and things like that, do you go into a situation putting your life on the line? Like knowing your life is on the line. Okay. So again, to this, I've been called, you know what I mean? So this, I love my career. This is what I do. I signed up for this. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm not one of the guys that, you know, have a, over an abundance of, of sympathy for people who sign up for shit. You know, it is what it is. Some, my dad used to say, something gonna take you out of here, but you better die doing what you love. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. My whole life has been dangerous. Like flying an airplane is freaking dangerous, okay? Um, walking around with a gun is dangerous. At the end of the day, my training needs to be at the highest point to keep me safe. Does that make sense? It does. Because at the end of the day, I'll say it this way. You won't rise to your level of expectation. You're going to fall to your level of training, period. That's Where's it. your training? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So now, is it a dangerous job or is it just another day at the office? Mm. That's what I meant by that. So mentally, mentally. mentally you got to have your shit together. Okay. You got to okay. have your shit together. Now, I will say this. Bebe and I have a lot of talks. Look, bro. This, as a matter of fact, we had a big old function with um, when Mo3, they scared to come outside when that record came out, Right. Baby had to do his thing there. I pull up. Hey, man, I'm just here to do an EP survey. The guy at the door, $15 an hour. He was making a stink. No, you can't come in. You know what I'm saying? We got it. I said, look, bro, hey, I'm not here to rain on your parade, nothing like that. I got Bebe in the car. I'm here to do my opening survey. I'm not going to step on toes. He's my focus in and out, me and him. Yada, yada, yada. Nah, 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 nah. So I tell you what, this is what's going to happen. You're going to go get your supervisor, and then you're going to get the, uh, the promoter for this because you're going to mess up a lot of money for your $15 an hour in your power trip, because he's not coming in. If I can't come in and do my survey, Bebe's not coming in. You fuck if you're on the flyer or not. He's my responsibility. And the reality of it is, um, depending upon who the client is, if you get to a point where there's a level of trust, it's personal now. And I, I explain to Bebe, now he, he gets upset with me sometimes, but nigga, you a fuck about you being upset. I gotta explain this shit to Nicole. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not about me putting my life on the line because it's what I do. But if I do my job right and you don't do what I tell you to do, I got to explain this shit to Nicole. I got to explain this shit to my little nephews and shit. You know what I mean? Do you care who you bodyguard? Like, does that ever get to you? Like, if someone's a bad guy and you still got a bodyguard? Um, it depends. There's a conversation, right? I fired a few people. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I understand. Okay, you got money. You're going to pay me $400 an hour, but you're still going to do what I tell you to do because I got a family to go home to, too. And I don't want to sit on real life street stars and talk about how you got shot in the ass because you were being a dumbass. <laughs> right, that's a hard story. That's probably an easy story to tell. Because <laughs> these niggas going to ask the question. Yeah, like, ask the qu so tell me about the time such and such got shot. shot in the ass. They want to know. You know what I mean? God so now, and, and, and I say that openly to everybody who is thinking about hiring EP. Do what the fuck they tell you to do. Tupac and Biggie are dead because they didn't sit in the right spot in the car. You got celebrities that would try to strong arm you. We love them. We miss them. But there is no reason for any celebrity to be sitting in the passenger side of the car. Wow. Front okay. seat. No. To uh, just ease, the ease of access to Ridiculous. To they get to be sitting behind the driver. Ah. Okay. Nah, you saying some stuff. That was there. free. I was pretty free. The rest of this shit. I ain't gonna tell you no, no more of my secrets. What is the uh, what's your favorite bodyguard movie, like protection movie? Like uh, you know they got like extraction out there. They got a uh, you know Black Hawk. I mean not Black Hawk Down, but uh, you know the old dude with the president. Um, 
The angel, yeah, angel has fallen. Yeah, those are the 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 Secret Service ones are pretty good. Um, they give a more, and it's kind of funny that they, they don't have too many. Now is the time to do a real good EP movie for celebrities. That'd we got dope. a lot of rappers. The average, the lifespan of the average rapper is like what, 22, 23? Just about. See what I'm saying? That, now is the time for us to have a real good movie with somebody running EP to put this shit back to. It's not, it's not cool to have executive protection for rappers right now. Mm. Because don't, don't forget, we, we rapping about going into the hood with my chains without security, coming to the club without my security. Right. It's a couple of celebrities right here in Dallas that came to the club. I'm like, nigga, what the fuck are you doing? Sit your ass down. Yeah. They're trying to portray that image. It is, some of them, yeah, but some of them are tired. Mm. I feel that. I feel that a thousand. Some, right, some of them are tired. Let's do it like this. I want to be able to have you touch on the, you know, your businesses. Um, sure. you know, uh, again, back to, you know, we was able to uh you know, send a crew out to your uh your facility, you know yes. what I'm saying? Uh body bio tactical, man, where you have a whole you have, I mean, this is amazing because I want to yeah. talk about how you got, I don't know if you got the land or I don't know how you did it. Big shout out to Lynn at uh, TDSA, Texas Defense Shooting Academy. Um, he's given me access to use the whole range at my disposal. We got everything out there. We trained everybody from civilians, special ops guys, law enforcement, you name it, whatever you want to do, we got it. You saw the sniper tower, you saw yes. the room clearing area, you saw the different bays, um, whatever you want to do, we got it. It's, it's just a matter of getting it. We got to make it cool again, right? We got to make training cool again. We got to make training just as cool as carrying a gun again. We got to make Thanks. training just as cool as getting my gun wrapped in Gucci or Louis Vuitton, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Designer design gun. Designer <laughs> design gun. Which is absolutely stupid because if you train, it's going to get dirty anyway. But yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. it looks cool. It looks good. It looks good. But we have to make training cool again, right? Not just like we got to make EP cool. Going back to that... Um, uh, big shout out to the heavy hitters, man. I really love those guys for trusting us. Um, man, all those, all those the high, high end guys trusting us. We really appreciate that. Yeah, it means everything. What we try to instill on the body by old tactical side, which is what you're talking about, is getting the civilian sector to understand their two A rights and their right to defend themselves. How much it takes to defend yourself, right? Because it's all fun and games until. Your heart rate's jacked up. You got to run. You got to go save somebody. You got to go do something. You know what I'm saying? And now you got to pull off this accurate shot. But see, you've been standing at the indoor gun range in air conditioner, pop, pop, pop. Now you out here in the general populace. Your heart rate's up. You're tired. You're winded. And now you got to perform just like you did in the indoor gun range. So to make it realistic, that's why we do it in that environment. As real as possible. Definitely. Um, and I got to get your take on, uh, you know, we just recently had a shooting to where a young yes. man pulled up to the wrong house. Facts. And uh, was shot. Uh-huh. Um, you know, uh, and it happened again with another lady who pulled up to the wrong house in a car. And as she was leaving, they just, you know, shot out the door and, uh, you know, shot. When you see something like that as far as, you know, you have the uh, stand your ground law. Yeah. You also have, you know, the you know your property and your home invasion. Yep. Um, what are your thoughts when you see, like, someone just coming to the wrong house and someone being able to get a shot off shooting or even killing an individual just by making an honest mistake by coming to the wrong home? You got bad people to do stupid shit, bro. It's, it's gonna happen, okay? Um, the problem with that is, as horrible as it is, we can't allow, see, situations like that, stupid people fuck it up for good people. Yeah. That's where I'm going with that, okay? Cause see, if, if we let our politicians do too much with that, they'll take your guns. Well, you know, this person over here shot this kid for coming up to the door and so we're going to take your guns, too. Wait, wait a minute. Whoa. You see what I'm saying? So we got to be real careful with that politically. Do I think that person is an idiot and an asshole and need to go to jail? Fucking right. Throw them under the jailhouse. Give them a good boyfriend or girlfriend in the cell with them. Right? Facts. Before we get out of here, I got one question. Yeah. As much as you want. You're, you're in a building that has 10 floors. 10. Okay. You're on the 10th floor. Got it. No, you're on the roof. Each floor has three men patrolling to okay. have a ver whatever variety of weapons. Okay. You have a revolver and a knife. Bullshit. We'll not have a revolver and a knife. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just saying. <laughs> you set me up. So, wait, wait. Let me tell you what the motherfucker did, right? Let me tell you what motherfucker did. He set you up. He set you up. Ten floors. I'm on the top floor. So that's 21 entries. I got options, right? 
but only one and two at a time. Yes. Revolving the knife? Yes. What is this? What, what is it? Call, Call of Duty zombie yes. shit? All right, let's go. No, is, can, you, can you get out? That would be really fucked up, yes. <laughs> that would be really fucked up. I can't. <laughs> that would be fucked I up. I hey, I may have a limp when I get to the bottom of this motherfucker. But I'm going to get out of that bitch. Damn, that's what I'm going to kick your ass when I get out of this motherfucker. Right? <laughs> that sucks. Damn. This nigga gave me a revolver, bro. Wait, wait, wait. What kind of knife is this? What kind of knife he got? It better be crocodile. It better be crocodile. No, I want crocodile Dundee knife. God damn it. <laughs> No, I'm saying I would think you would t use one one shot to shoot like the first dude. You take his gun. Shit, no. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Is he? Is he, is he what he did? What? Ten floors, three guys on each floor. That's thirty motherfuckers. So don't you got a little stealth to you? Like at least for the first couple of floors. Like Look, I'm old and fat. They didn't know I got no. <laughs> No stealth at all. <laughs> it is what it is. You better look. Look here. Unless we got a power box, a circuit breaker oh, yeah, up top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm killing that bitch. Let, let's go. Can I, can, I have, can I have my night vision? Can I, can I have my night vision? All right, yeah, look, yeah, look. Yeah, yeah. All right, look. You got to taste it. Fuck, bro. It's going to suck. It's up close and personal, bitch. <laughs> it's fucking sick. If the government tried to take away your guns, would they be able to? The United States government will not be able to ever do that. Um, one, um, they kind of hinted at it some years ago. You got too many law enforcement and government um, enforcement, um, FBI, CIA, that's going to walk off the job. Immediately. Um, one, don't forget, back in the late 40s, um, when Japan thought they were going to invade the country, they said behind every blade of grass is going to be American with a gun. There's more guns than there are people in this country. You can't, you can't do that. I mean, they're they, they, they going to do their best to talk you into bringing them in, but they can't knock knocking on doors and come get guns. No, they ain't gonna do that. I don't see that happening. Why are there so many countries that function so well without guns? The fuck are you talking about? They don't function well without guns. It's always somebody getting shot. You know what? As a matter of fact, no guns. This motherfucker got a white van and killed 30 motherfuckers. Bad people are going to find a way. Then we have somebody else that stab a bunch of people in another country. Stabbing is different. But th there's less mass shootings in like Europe. Okay, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Majority of five, okay, when they, do, when they run stats about shootings, I need you to understand they're including law enforcement shootings as well. Okay. So, so the data is skewed. It's not as many shootings as you think. Okay. Think about it. Every time a plane crashed, everybody knows about it. See? Oh, my God. They're not training the pilots. Bro, you know how many planes in the sky right now? That's facts. But how many wrecks happen? It's, it's at least two wrecks happen every day in Dallas. Facts. Do we talk about that? Come on, more than that. Facts. You feel me? Ah, yeah. yeah. There you go. There Do you it. go. Are you using my phone too? I, I yeah, I've been using thing. your phone. I've been using your phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> um, now, I also, you know, you spoke on a tactical. I just want to have you, of course, lastly, shout out, you know, the, the guys. Academy? Okay. Yeah, the Academy. Um, Big uh, thing, Academy. Big shit. Um, yeah, because you got a lot of guys coming out of there that's doing a lot of things for a lot of people out here. And I just yes. Want to so the Academy is, hey, I want to do security at whatever level. If you want to work at the mall, be a mall cop. If you want to work at the bank, if you want to do EP, our academy will send you through the protocols to get you licensed via Texas DPS, regulatory services, and private security bureau. We'd, we'd knock you out for that. So anything you want on the side of getting licensed in any facet, we, we'll take care of that for you. Yeah. Now, I hate to do this to you, but I got to ask do you because you mentioned it. You mentioned it. Um, you said uh, body, you know, getting somebody to protect you protect your life, um, you know, that guy may sleep with your girl. Okay. Did you ever have that scenario no. happen? Okay. Absolutely just, not. Just no. making sure, just making sure. Yeah, yeah. No. You're close. You in the house, goddammit. No. <laughs> I got to make a run to the store real quick. That, that's I need sister. You to... that's, 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 that's sister. Nah, we okay. 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 Just making sure. Just making sure. All right. Um. Uh. right. Let's go and do like this. Man, I want to get your shout outs, man, as far as, yeah. I mean, uh, your, your Instagram follows. Yeah. And, uh, everything you're on because, again, you not only you fly planes, uh, you show your tactical response, you show your your, your skills with weaponry, Um. all kind of weapons. Yeah. I still don't know what your favorite weapon is. Man, um, I'm going to be fair. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be transparent. Um, it really depends on what I'm wearing. Wow. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So I mean, you have clothes yeah. that go with the the, the firearm yeah. you're going to roll I mean, with. Shit, my Glock got to match my kicks, baby. Damn. You know what I mean? Oh. That, that was a joke. Yeah. Oh. That was a joke, God damn it. <laughs> that was a fucking joke. <laughs> yeah, y'all okay, about to say? New drip. Well, he said my Glock got to match my... No, I yeah. did not fucking <laughs> say that. 
<laughs> okay, here's what, so here's what I'm doing. And, and I learned this, believe it or not, from my wife. Depending upon what you wear is going to depend on whether or not you can properly conceal it. Ah, I see. You see what I'm saying now? So, yeah. like, in most cases, like right now, um, and most of the time when you see me doing close EP, I wear my Glock 48 because it's real thin, slim line. Uh, shout out to Glock. Um, and I use uh, Shield Arms magazine so I get my mag capacity in there. But uh, favorite gun, man, it all depends on what I'm doing. I don't have a favorite gun, per se. Okay, and uh, as, I, as you give those, um, those Instagram tags, I mean, the, you know, the, yeah. your ads, um, are you on Call of Duty? Do you play Call of Duty? No, I don't play Call of Duty. Last time I played Call of Duty, they got mad at me. Um, my son and his friends got mad at me because I slaughtered them because I do it for real, <laughs> and they don't let me play anymore. So it's fucked up. I know. I said I would love to. I would love to get on the game. <laughs> just go one round with up. you, man. Just yeah, see how it goes. Real fucked up. Like they, they don't let me play no more. This, you're cheating. I'm not cheating. This is how you do it. Yeah, I can see you uh, <laughs> tactically on a team like leading us all. <laughs> Here's how we're gonna preach this. Here's how, this we, do. Here's how we do this, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, man. Yeah, um, where can they follow you at? Oh man, look. Um, at body by o three one eight Instagram. And Twitter, okay. Um, TikTok is new. I kind of act a fool on there. <laughs> Ladies, chocolate pawpaw is on TikTok. Chocolate, <laughs> chocolate pawpaw. <laughs> oh, it is. oh, holy it God! Is what it is. Um, acting a fool. -foo. <laughs> um, uh, of course, again, Instagram on my private side, acting a fool. Chocolate pawpaw underscore official. For the private side, fellas, don't don't send me an ad on fucking. <laughs> stay, yeah, stay, please stay away. Just shout out to LGBT, but the fellas, please don't send me. A request on chocolate pawpaw. Um, <laughs> Talk to me. But yeah, um, when you go to Instagram, body by 0318, click the link in the bio, the website, everything you see there is to go. If you don't see the date that you want on whatever class that you want on the website, give us a call, shoot us a text, and we can do it private. Everything we offer, we do private as well. Now we're going to, again, like I said, we're going to bring real life up there. Yeah. We're gonna bring the cameras out. We want yeah. we want to yeah. run yeah. through the same gauntlet yeah. that the yeah. heavy hitters did. We're gonna have do. You, we have, gonna you work, have you been working out since the last time you came? Uh, no, but yes, <laughs> some of us have. Some of us haven't. We gonna figure it out. <laughs> we gonna figure it out. Any shout outs you want to give? Yeah, man. Big shout out to Tactical Social Worker underscore P L L C. That's the goddess, ladies. Trying to get your skills up, protect your space, uh, boundaries and cocktails. She got you rolling. On that, um, a Kofuna community security. We do everything security, whatever you need, we got you. Um, shout out to my instructors, Nas, Shannon. Man, yeah, we, we rolling. We up. Man, you already know, man. Again, it's a long time coming to have you in here, man. We got to have you back because, again, the world needs to get knowledge as far as using firearms. It seems like they're becoming more prevalent. Yeah. Uh, every day there's a yeah. new gun. Every time there's a new kid wanting yeah. to carry it. And we need to be able to teach them how to use this thing and right. you do it properly. So we're going to bring you back. And we're going to do some more content with you. We're going to do some do content outside yeah. the couch, yeah. man. Yeah. But definitely, man, you are in the building, man. We got to say it, man. You are a real life street star. Real life street star. Big on the building. We love it. We love it. We love it. We love it.